Kathy is the first to build a fully AI powered app builder. And this allows users to speak their minds. And then the app is built around that. And with me is the CEO and founder, Taraj Helmi, to explain Appsy. Um, sounds like a very exciting, interesting, cutting edge company. Let's start with an overview of the company, Taraj. What is Appsy? Thanks, Jane. Thanks for having me. Um, so, uh... Uh, the best way would be an example. Imagine you have an idea uh, that you want to build. Um, as you go probably talk to your friends about it, you uh, go to our website, appsy.io, you start talking about your idea. There is AI that understands what you're talking about. It probably is going to ask you some questions to clarify your idea and maybe give you some recommendations. As you are going through the conversation, you see your app is being built magically by AI. Uh, it will then take you through customizing that uh, by, again, asking some questions, giving you some recommendations. Again, you see everything ha happening in real time. In a, few, in, in a matter of a few hours, your app is complete. You can start using it in your mobile and uh, uh, as easy as that. So uh, basically, that's what we've been doing from day one to make sure to make, uh, to make it very easy and simple for users to build their apps based on their ideas. I mean, that sounds fascinating. And this is based on the large language model that, you know, we've heard so much about, I guess, right? Because you're using your voice to create this app. Uh, exactly. So part of it uh, is definitely based on that. So understanding what uh, information that user is uh, uh, providing to us. Uh, it does, it requires a lot of that natural language processing, which is powered by LLM, large language models for sure. But it's uh, what we are doing, it's uh, beyond that. Uh, so after we extract information, knowing how to utilize that information to turn that into an app, what other questions we should ask from the user, what is important, what is not, what other things might be important that we have to recommend to the user to go through them. All of that is something which is beyond LLM that we have done internally at AFSI. Interesting. Now you have a long background in tech. Kind of explain what brought you here. Um, so maybe the first uh, memory that comes to me when is goes back when I was five or six years old. Uh, so I remember uh, I had this computer back then was Commodore 64. We used to plug it into the TV. Yeah. There was no monitor back then, so it's pretty old. Uh, <laughs> I had written the catalog, which was in English. I kind of knew English at the time, not my first language. So, uh, and I saw like these things that were in a like board there, I assumed they were programs and I started trying them. My dad came back uh, from work and I said that sit down behind the TV and I asked him to just punch in some numbers and it showed the multiplication, division, addition and those kind of things. And my, my, my dad was like, you were supposed to play with this. What, what did you do? I said, I guess it's program. I did some program. So started from then. So uh, I, I had interest in programming, maybe some talents. I, well, I stayed in, in the field. I started working, but my first experience uh, uh, on a startup idea goes back 2016. Uh, uh, I uh, met a person and uh, we decided to work on an idea to use AI uh, for uh, health insurance. With that, we were accepted into Y Combinator, which is one of the best accelerators uh, worldwide to uh, support startups. Like if you're not familiar, probably uh, Airbnb, uh, uh, Fitbit, Pinterest, all of them came from uh, YC. So we went there and uh, I learned so much on that journey. Uh, I figured out, so it's not about just idea. It's not about me. It's about so many other things, how to sell, how to find, define your market and whatnot. That's right. Uh, after that experience, uh, maybe the most important thing uh, which brought me here was uh, one of the jobs I took as the head of product and engineering at the major local platform. Mm -hmm. um, and that, uh, with that experience, I started focusing a lot on how apps are being built, the complexities there. And from there, uh, given uh, I started, at, it was a time that LLMs, like you mentioned, was coming up. By the way, I uh, went back to uh, USC to continue my PhD around those time. I had quit my PhD years ago, uh, but I decided to go back so that I start uh, brushing my uh, knowledge about uh, AI. And combining all of these together, I decided to uh, leverage AI to make app building uh, even much more easier and more automated. 
Okay. I mean, it sounds like something that's needed um, because a lot of people ha would have an idea for an app or would like to create an app but just don't know where to start. But the being able to speak it, I think, would make that much easier. Is that who you see your main customers are? Would they be small businesses or who would be the main users of AppSy? Sure. Uh, yeah, I feel uh, that's a challenge, right? So a lot of people, when they think uh, they want to build an app, they know uh, their idea, most of them. Uh, I would say all of them know, have an idea. Some of them know the details, some of them don't, but they do not know how to translate it, this into uh, an app. And the problem is because uh, there are uh, the smaller ones like startups, small businesses, they are short in resources. They do not probably have a tech team. They have a limited budget. They do not have the time to go through the, through the training and learn how to use this. There are some tools that allow people to build it yourself or do it themselves, but not just by easily. They have to build it themselves. Uh, it takes months. So they do not have these resources. So that's uh, the number one user for us. But still, any business who needs an app, it can be long-term, can be our, our customer because uh, even larger organizations, if they want to build an app uh, for their internal use, uh, why not building it in two hours rather than uh, going and using a, their IT team and building it in uh, two months, right? So at the end of the day, our product caters everybody who wants to build an app. But from our perspective, when we think about marketing and going after the market, startups, small businesses are going to be on top of our lists. Yeah. What about updating the app? So say a small business uses your service and it needs updating in six months or something. Is that easily available as well? It is as easy as building your first app. So you just go back and select your app and then you continue the conversation. You say, you might say, I want to like add a feature here or I want to add a new screen. And it does that for you. You at the end, you can say, "I'm done." Publish it for me. It publishes for you, or push a button for publish, and it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, do you have any examples of small businesses that have used Appsy to create an app, and what happened? Sure. Uh, in the past uh, few years, we've been uh, so, uh, we've been uh, serving the entire world. Uh, fortunately. Uh, we have customers from all, the, all all continents, and we have built for them uh, in different uh, sectors. Uh, one that came comes to mind is because uh, also it was a very successful startup. Is a startup called Hudu. It's an Iowa-based startup. Uh, the CEO of the company is very visionary. He wanted to revolutionize. Um, the service marketplace. Uh, so uh, the, his idea was that there are some, there are a couple of them, but none of them is trying to get the job done. He wants to make sure that there are fine grained reviews on people who offer to provide the service, but he wanted to also be able to assist them with providing comprehensive training on what they do on top of a platform that does intelligent matching. So, uh, so people who need a service are intelligently matched with the providers. Okay. Uh, like a lot of other startups who uh, unfortunately having this experience, uh, they have a limited budget. They go after offshore developers and he had done the same. And the app at the time that he started talking with me, uh, he had spent a good amount of money, but the app wasn't functional. It wasn't looking good. After he came, started using us, uh, uh, they, uh, he was able to build his app with maybe 10 times uh, the number of features maybe at 20% of the cost that he had paid to the other uh, uh, dev shop. And it was much, much faster. Uh, in the past few months after his app had, uh, was released, he had a rapid exp expansion, not just in Iowa, but nationally. And uh, he, has, he started creating jobs in other states for, uh, for uh, basically for service pro providers. He also secured significant investment lately, and he came back to AFC to do the second phase of his app. So that was a great experience for me because I felt uh, not only the app was done well, but it also helped him uh, go beyond his idea. One, yeah. At one time, I, I remember I was traveling. I was um, trying to get my connecting flight. He called me and uh, he said to me, he said, I cannot believe that what I can see on the first release on the app, I spent so much less on money, I, much faster, but there are so many screens, so many features. And all of them are working perfectly. This is, I cannot uh, uh, tell you how happy I am. And that was the time I really felt good that customers feel so good about what we are doing. Yeah, well, it's a real proof of concept that it actually works in the real world. So um, what's your goals and roadmap for AppSea going forward? 
So uh, it's uh, I think it's three folds. Number one, uh, building apps is the core of what we are doing. So uh, at the end of the day, we want to make sure that apps that are built by apps here stand out. That means that the features that we include in the app, that we have to continue working on them and making them uh, better and better. And there is no limit how we can uh, go forward. So that apps that are done by apps it aesthetically look much better and function much more elegantly. At the same time, we want to uh, go after, go a little bit broader because uh, we need to uh, support more sectors, which means that we have to be able to offer more elements, more features that can support them. Uh, on the AI side of the things, uh, we are starting to working to working at what I call AI version 2.0. With uh, 1.0, uh, my idea was to create a AI developer so that people can focus on their idea and AI builds it for them. So they do not care about how it's being built. With 2.0, we want to focus on uh, telling user what is important, what is good for them to include in, in their app. You can think of it, of it as an AI business analyst. So instead of focusing on what they want, we are going to be helping uh, them with what they need. So we might, it might suggest you are doing, uh, you're building your app to cater that type of customer. You probably want to do these kind of extra things in your app. So it's going to just go beyond just building them, but offering them what it is. Lastly, uh, beyond AI and uh, do, doing apps, it's kind of how we can see the app around us. I believe uh, just a screen, laptop screen is not enough to uh, show all of the information about your app. Your app has 20 screens, 50 screens or whatnot. Why not leveraging the entire space around us? So we are creating an immersive experience where people uh, can put their VR headset and they can see all of their app in, in front of them, around them. And then they can easily just interact with all of them at the same time. The, we have initial versions of that and we are looking at them internally. Hopefully we can release a version of that in the next coming months. Oh, wow. It sounds like it, you know, fascinating developments in place. So now, Taraj, I just want to ask you about AI in general, because it's been so it's gotten so much attention this year. We've seen you know, NVIDIA and all these companies benefit from it. Um, how do you see AI regulation that's been talked about and just the future of where we're going and how we're going to live with artificial intelligence? Um, that's a, uh, a question that is being asked in almost every session that uh, I attend regarding AI. By the way, I'm, uh, like I said, uh, I went back to USC to finish my PhD and even in academic areas, people are talking about that, that how is it going to change the world? And to me, I think uh, I normally uh, answer this question in this way. I think there are four uh, dimensions to intelligence, uh, two of them being knowledge, access to knowledge and processing power. AI excels on them. So ChatGPT, good example, it has been trained using all of the information on the internet. It says by 2021. So everything that was on the internet by 2021, it has access to that, right? At the same time, computers have a lot of processing power, much more than humans. So because of that, AI can do things much faster in a more accurate fashion. However, it's not that end of the, uh, it's basically intelligence. There are two other dimensions, which I call intentionality and creativity. Uh, intentionality is when you get a lot of information from your sensory world, like eyes, ears, and whatnot. You just uh, decide to do something. Uh, creativity means that you uh, all of us know that humans are creative. They can come up with new ways. They come with new questions, new ways of doing things. And when, when we think at the last two dimensions, human intelligence is much ahead, uh, ahead of AI. So I think as long as we focus on creativity, we train ourselves to be uh, more creative rather than learning how to do repetitive tasks, AI becomes a tool for us. And I think even society should be uh, looking at uh, creating education, which is more focused on creativity rather than uh, telling people what to do. Uh, in other ways, I think rather than trying to, when we think about matters, instead of trying to always answer questions that are being asked by other people, we should start thinking about how we should come up with questions because coming up with questions require creativity. And uh, as long as we, we we focus on that, I think we are going to be uh, very successful utilizing AI. Yeah, well, it's going to be fast. It's already fascinating. And I think it's going to get even more so. So, Torch, thank you so much for coming and sharing APSI, a fascinating company. It sounds like a great solution for small businesses to take a look at and see if it fits with their needs. So thank you so much.